Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of LA Noir. So we're continuing from where we left off here. And we're gonna be doing the consoles car. Uh this this is I think it's the consoles car, it was from last time. But anyways, about this case is that um I've never actually played this case before. Uh if you and if you guys enjoy this series, do drop a like. But I've never actually played this case, and if you're wondering why I never played this case, it's because this case is a DLC case. This case came out as an add-on later after the game, so I just played through the main cases in the game when the game first came out. I never played any, any of the DLCs, and I know that in the Complete Edition, which I'm playing, this is the PS4 version, that it has all the DLC cases. And it's apparently the DLC cases are in chronological order, because there's like a DLC case, I think, in Homicide, in Traffic, and then I think there's an Arson one, too. So there's, um... A bu bunch of DLC cases that I never played, and this is just one of them. And also, I've been reading your comments. A lot of you guys told me that in this case, there's the funniest accusation in the game. So I'm going to be accusing a few people to see if I get that accusation that you guys keep telling me about. Okay, we're gonna keep this short. I'm already late for the DA. First up, Phelps, Bukowski. We got a report of a brand new Packard abandoned in an empty lot off 2nd Street between Olive and Grand. DR is one Oswald Jacobs says the vehicle was dumped in his backyard. There's a patrolman on site. Get down there and see what you can turn up. Any questions? Good, get going. Okay, Oswald Jacobs abandoned vehicle. Better go earn our pathetic wages. Earn our prophetic wages. Um, reporting witness at crime scene. The consul's car, Jacob's backyard. Residential backyard site of abandoned We've got a scene, Packard. A dumped okay. car and a witness. Let's get there. Rimsky, O'Halloran. Intelligence has information on a stolen car racket. An abandoned vehicle. You catch all the good ones, huh, Phelps? Sounds like there's more to it than that. Nobody dumps a shiny new Packard unless they borrowed it without asking. You don't say. You're on fire today, Einstein. Very funny. Come on, my intense protege. Let's go save the world. Oh, this door is blocked off. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Uh oh. Thank you guys for telling me the cop car does not play any radio because I've been getting really annoyed trying to turn off the music you hear about constantly. Fought in Seattle, threw him out. Wife says she's gonna take him back. Women generally show more compassion. What are you talking about? Adrian dumped on her. He was humping the secretary. Margaret should show some pride. Pride comes before a fall, Bukowski. Talking from experience. So they're mentioning um. Adrian Black from the last case, so apparently his wife took him back. I actually never knew that. Uh, I thought I thought that he just gets divorced. Let's pull up to the scene right here. Phelps, traffic. I'm Officer Houlihan. Cars down the alleyway, detectives. Yeah, that's definitely a very you got a expensive call about car. an abandoned vehicle. Yes, sir. The car has flags. Might be some kind of diplomatic vehicle. Has anyone touched this vehicle since you arrived? No. And that Jacob's bird over there was on station before I got here. We'll talk with him in a moment. Give us some time to look the place over. Sure, take your time. He's a sore headed old son of a bitch anyway. Take a look at the vehicle first. What flag is that? That's the- that looks like the flag of... Is that Argentina? Oh. We'll have to use the registration to trace the owner. Both liquids. 
One flag is missing. I must have taken the flag as a souvenir. I was Can't right. I it is Argentina. Value. For people wondering, how the hell did you know that flag? It's because I, I, you have a big map in my office, and it's like of all the countries in the world, and underneath them is all the flags. And so I've stared at that same map for like years and years, and so like whenever I see a flag, uh, most of the time I can tell what flag it is. It's owned by the Argentinian Embassy. Hey. Consulate General of Argentina, Suite 210, 5055 Wilshire Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. Okay. Empty. There is something I'm noticing already. The spare tire is missing. Where is that spare tire? Stealing the wheels wheel. for amateurs. Car ring would have stripped it in a warehouse. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Um, they would have taken the entire car. Something's not right here. What was that? Window shattered too. What do we got over here? Combination wrench. Must have used it to remove the wheel lugs. Doesn't it doesn't make sense? Somebody would take an expensive car and just only take one one wheel. This doesn't pertain to the case. Could have been used to smash the window. So yeah, so that's why it's helpful to have music on because it'll. Car was dumped in his backyard after all. Let's let's examine our clues really quickly here. And then vehicle. Missing license plates. Removed. Missing Argentinian flag. Registration slip. Okay. Missing wheel. Wrench. Okay. Oswald Jacobs? That's right. What exactly happened here, Mr. Jacobs? Last night, I was looking out of my window. I like to keep an eye on what's going on. I can understand that. You see this empty lot? Damn kids play stickball here. Always breaking my windows. Always asking for their ball back. Can we get back to the car, Mr. Jacobs? Don't be impatient, Sonny. Anyway. Last night, I see this brand spanking new Packard up on bricks. 65, Oswald Jacobs reporting witness at crime scene. Witness report. Here. He looks pretty confident in himself. Los okay. Angeles finest, huh? God help us all. Did you see who stole the Packard? Hell yes, I did. I saw three goddamn Mexicans going to work on it. What? Um, okay. Um, let me just see the, um... Accused, let's see. You're lying, Mr. Jacobs. I think you're covering for someone. Well, you must know something I don't. Okay, so that's not the, the accused. My mistake. The hell? The hell is wrong with you? The... What? What kind of face is that? What? Okay, um...
99.3% play of players chose the correct answer using an intuition point on this. Um, ask the community. Remove an answer. Um... Yeah, so it's apparently good cop. It's um it's just it's just that face. It's just it's just hard for me to tell exactly um what what <laughs> like it it's just it's just that random statement that he just blurted out before and then just that face. Can you tell cop. us what they were doing? Using the headlights of an old Ford so they could strip the thing. I yelled out to him, I'll call the cops. So they loaded up their car and drove off. Tooting and hollering and yelling obscenities at me in Mexican. You speak Spanish, sir? No, I do not. They speak Spanish in Mexico, not uh, not Mexican. Um, Hispanic suspects. Okay. After the uh, Mexicans left, you didn't go anywhere near the car. After I scared them off? No, I didn't go anywhere near that car. Okay, no, I, I don't believe this. Um, I didn't go... The, the fact... This is BS. No, I, I don't believe... And the thing about this is, a lot of times just reading the statements, it's easier for me to figure out whether they're lying or not um, uh, without even looking at their face. So, an ex really expensive car pulls up here. This is not a very rich neighborhood. It's abandoned, and you're telling me you don't go and take a look? After that, I don't believe you. Um, okay, and let's see, just the accused. I didn't know there is. were three of them. It was dark. It must be 50 feet from the kitchen to the car. You telling me I'm lying? Okay, no, it's not, um... Sorry. Sometimes you have to shake the tree to see what falls out. Okay. Yeah, so that's not the funny accuse. Um, okay. I'm gonna go bad cop on this one. You went out to the car. Once they were gone, you had to take a look for yourself. I was curious. Ain't a law against that. So what if I took a look around that car? You can't be accusing me of nothing. Okay, so he what? He went to the car. Possible suspect vehicle. Okay, let's see here. Tell me about the car they were driving. It was an old Ford. I didn't catch the license number. Okay, it doesn't seem like he's lying with that, but I just want to see what the ac accuse is. You were drunk and it was dark. What's with the smoke screen about the car, Jacobs? You got better information about that vehicle than I'm giving you? You better use it. Was that the funny accus accusation? You were drunk and it was dark? Okay, I'm We're just gonna keep doing it. For now. You... A bunch of a bunch of you guys told me to just keep accusing people because there's a really funny accuse in this one, but I'm just gonna keep uh, accusing and backing out just to see what the responses are gonna be. But um, okay, yeah, that that response. Um, it was an old Ford. I'm gonna go with um, good cop. You look like the kind of guy who notices details. You're right there. The car was old, but it looked brand new. Candy apple red paint job stands out a mile. Okay, got it right. Vehicle stripped of parts. What exactly did you see them take? They was working on the tires. That's all that was took. What the hell? Okay, it was... They was working on the tires. That's all it was took. I'm turning... He was working on the tires. That's all it was took. That's like, it's, okay, um, okay, let's see here. It was working on the tires, that's all that was took. Here. Missing license plates, no, the missing Argentinian flag. Missing wheel. Missing license plate or missing Argentinian flag. Can I... I don't know which one should I choose. The missing license plate or the missing Argentinian flag? Because they're both things that are missing from the vehicle. Um... I'm gonna say the flag, I guess. Um... 
Why did you take the license plate? Me? Well, what I do with license plates? You saying I have them? Missing license plates. Scratching around in that book won't prove nothing. You should show me some respect. Thank you for your help, Mr. Jacobs. You can speak to Officer Thibault about signing Damn. a formal statement. When you get the car out of the way, maybe you could come back and do something about those kids. Well, how about we bring you an umpire's mask? Jacobs dumped the book he was reading in a hurry when we walked up. You curious what he didn't want us to see? Yeah, so, um, okay, that was, um, that, I, I messed up on that one, I made a mistake, but I got three out of four. Um, okay. 1947, Juan Francisco Valdez. Okay, so we have the owner of the vehicle, a degenerate. I'll run John Madsen by R&I. Contact details on a William Dewey. This looks like business rather than pleasure. Dark good looks? Likes gifts? Very innocent? Very pale? Articularly shy? Angelic features, but feisty? What? I think we've rung this place dry. Let's find a game well. And also, um, here's the thing about this, um, is, uh, you, the police... the game well, Phelps. The police can't. The police can't just go on somebody's property like that. Like, the crime scene is in. Is in. I guess is this even his backyard? I mean, it's a. I guess a bunch of people's backyards. But the thing about this is going onto his property and like taking a book from his property. No, the police can't do that. You can't do that. Um, like I said, it's a different time, so they probably could have gotten away with that. But today, no. Um, however, though, I will say that seeing the name on there, that that name down there, like a fancy book. That might be probable cause to link it to the crime, possibly. Um, but it could have just been a different, uh, different Juan. Somebody who doesn't even have anything to do with the crime. So it's still, it's a very gray area. You know, a book just right there on the bench. You don't want to, um, yeah. Can we even go talk to him again? No, we can't. I guess. Hey, where am I supposed to? What am I supposed to do now? Um. Phelps badge twelve forty seven. How could I help, Detective? Could you run the name Dewey Brothers? Possibly a dealership or car mechanics workshop. One moment. Dewey Brothers Packard Dealership, six two nine Figueroa Street. Got it. Can you put me through to Michigan 2458, please? Connecting you now. Hello, can I help you? LAPD, ma'am. Can I speak to John Madsen, please? He's at school, officer. Uh, what's this about? Is he in trouble? How old is your boy, ma'am? Just turned 16. Wrong person, Mrs. Madsen. Sorry to disturb you. Are there any messages for me? There's just one message for you, Detective. A four-door Packard diplomatic license number, Paul Robert 706, was reported missing this morning by Juan Francisco Valdez. Could you have him brought in? He's already here at Central, Detective. He's demanding an audience, as he calls it. Thanks. Can you get a message to Captain Leary? Tell him we'll be in as soon as we can. Thanks, ma'am. Can you cordon off this lot until we have the vehicle impounded? So, um... 
We'll follow up on the owner. Get a statement from Jacobs, and I'll read your report back at the station. So this case is a lot more disturbing than I thought. I thought that he was... Packard dealership or head back to Central and interview this Valdez character? Your call. I thought that this Valdez guy was having um, affairs with multiple guys, but it turns out that a lot of the people on that list are young kids, you know, young boys. And so, um, uh, this guy, this guy is probably a pedophile. How about 50? Let's see, Dewey Bros dealership. Let's go to the dealership first. This has got to be the 50th abandoned vehicle call we have caught this year. One more and I'm going to go crazy. Not your favorite cases? You kidding me? This is barely even police work. Of all the bad guys in this city, we get lumped with the ones who can't even be bothered to keep what they steal. Okay, let's go see what's going on at this dealership. Don't tell me, let me guess. You were making your way past the lot, caught sight of the new model four-door, and couldn't help yourself. You could see yourself in that car and just had to take a closer look. Well, I can't say as I blame you. <laughs> that line was so rehearsed, there is no way that that's just something he came by and just said off the top of his head. That was definitely rehearsed. Just look at the tone that he said, and he definitely was practicing that. He does that to every customer. LAPD, already... Mac. We'd like to speak with the owner. I already don't like this That's guy. That's me, William Dewey, proprietor at your service. We're investigating Please the shady theft used of a car sales belonging man. to the Argentine embassy. Are you missing a combination wrench? I don't know, detective, but I know how we can find out. Follow me. We keep all our tools in here. Mind if we look around? Be my guest. You sure you guys aren't interested in a new car? Huh? Oh my god. Maybe a used this is, car. This is a police I have some investigation. Nice cars for guys your way Shut up. Bracket. Why don't you give us some alone time, Dewey? Go sell some cars or whatever it is that you do here. That's not right. I already see the missing, um, I already see the missing Long wrench. Size. No. One left. Gabriel Delgado is missing a three-quarter. It would take a smarter man than me to connect that. Connect what? Oh. What do we got here? It doesn't appear to be connected. Not much help. Joe. 
रंग I guess the, is the music still like playing? I'm just a little confused right now. Oh, what's? Doesn't give me anything to go on. Oh, no good. We need diplomatic plates. Circumstantial. See what it says on here. No down payment on approved credit. If you don't mind, we have oh. a few questions. Association with Valdez. Packards are great cars, but this doesn't look like the kind of place favored by foreign embassies. How do you know Valdez? I don't know Valdez. The embassy bought the car. All I know is he must know a quality car when he sees one. Boys, if you have nothing to do, I have a few cars you could wash. How does 10 cents a car sound? Yeah, this is it right here. This one. Valdez's notebook. And I know a shyster when I see one. You and Valdez are in this. A uh, shyster means basically like a scammer. That's pretty much like somebody that's going to lie to you and scam you out of your money. People don't really use that term anymore, but that's basically um, people use that term uh, back in the day a long time ago. Me and Valdez, I hardly know him. Valdez wouldn't wipe his shoes with me. Valdez's notebook. We found your contact details in Valdez's notebook. He had to be calling you for something, Dewey. Okay. So I met Valdez in a bar. We cut a deal and he bought the car through the embassy. I cut him some change on the side. It happens all the time. There's still more to this. I don't I don't trust him. Um, whereabouts of Delgado? Delgado's the mechanic who the wrench is missing. Where can we find Delgado? I don't know. He sure as hell isn't here. Let me just see what the accuse is. You're lying. You've got him holed up somewhere. I'm having nothing to do with that kid. You can't prove any different. Okay. That's not the funny accusation. You're off the hook. For now. Address, Dewey. Or my partner shoves your head in a car door. Okay, all right. You can't threaten people Apartment like that. Apartment 3, 103 Hill Street. And tell him from me. If he ever shows his face around here again, I'm going to kick his butt from here to kingdom come. Wrench used an auto theft. A wrench from this dealership was used to strip the wheels from a Packard last night, Mr. Dewey. A couple of Hispanics were seen taking parts. We've had a spate of thefts ourselves. Comes with the location. Even bastards to steal anything the minute your back is turned. A wrench from his dealership was used to strip the wheels from a Packard last night, Mr. Dewey. A couple of Hispanics were seen taking parts. We've had a spate of thefts ourselves. Comes with this, um, uh, uh, 
this location. Feeding bees will steal anything the minute your back is turned. Let's see what the accusation is. Stop lying to me, Dewey. The thieves work for you. You can't prove that. Go ahead and try. You don't ask, you never find out. Okay, that's not it. Hmm. This guy has been lying to me on just two different occasions. Um. Hmm. Let's ask the community. Wow, people are really divided on this one. Wow. Um, who? Um. Yeah, people are really divided on this one. Um, it's actually almost a complete tie. On this one, that's wow. Um, <sighs> hmm. Ooh, I guess we'll go with good cop because he's saying the wrench could have been stolen, but we don't really have evidence. So that's it. Like I said, the workshop's too close to the street. It's difficult to keep an eye on. I it. think I messed that up. Thank yeah, you for your uh, it was bad cop. No problem. God damn that kid. I'm just an honest car salesman. Oh, yeah, sure. Seems like you just don't know who you can trust these days. Go into movies, Dewey. You're missing your calling. Time to visit Gabriel Delgado. See how good his excuse is. You scummy used car salesman. Um, okay, attention, veterans. Use your bond to buy a car delivered today so people actually bought war bonds back then that's actually a huge amount of how the u.s paid for their military in world war one and world war two basically how a war bond worked back then is you would uh buy a bond from the government and so you know the government like um i'm just gonna give an example maybe like um you know 50 dollar bond which um which 50 dollars back then was a lot of money and what would happen is the government would actually pay you back that bond amount after the war with a little bit of interest. So you would make a little bit of money and you would also, um, uh, you know, help support the war effort. So bonds were very popular. People bought them very uh, commonly back then. That's actually how we funded our um, uh, our military during World War One and World War II. The United States, we actually were not taxed as much as we are taxed today to this, to this point. So um, uh, it was, uh, we, the United States and a lot of its history had a lot less taxes than we do today. Uh, Central Police Station. I'm gonna go to Delgado's residence first. Um. What you the? You read the story in the Examiner about the Navy developing three-dimensional movies? What's a dimension? You know, like a graph. Vertical axis is Y and horizontal is X. Well, that's clear as mud. Third dimension would be Z. So, things would be popping out of the screen. That's ridiculous. Scare people out of the theater. God's name would want that. I don't know. People scoffed at the idea of talkies and color. And look what we have now. All units, shots fired. Officer needs help. Shot test. Oh, wow. Hang on a second. I don't think this is a, um... I don't think this is a coincidence. Look, Delgado's residence is literally, like, what, two, three blocks from where he dumped the car? I don't think, I don't think this is a coincidence. I don't think it's a coincidence that his apartment is so close to where the car was dumped. That's not a coincidence.
Okay, Delgado's residence. Let's see what's going on over here. Okay, let's see what Gabriel has to say for himself. I just hope our Archangel hasn't already flown. What the hell is this guy doing? Uh, where do you see a number three marked on that door? Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes? LAPD, ma'am. We're looking for Gabriel Delgado. Gabriel? We're from the police. Policia, you understand? Yes, I understand. Could you come inside? What is your name? Ana Rodriguez. Is Gabriel Delgado here, Ms. Rodriguez? No. What do you want with Gabriel? Is he in trouble? Stay where you are, Ms. Rodriguez. We need to take a look around. But he is not here. I have told you. Check out the surrounds. I'll stay he's with here. Rod. See, see how she acts. How she reacted. He's definitely here. He's hiding somewhere in so the apartment. So how far along are you, Anna? Oh, look at what we got. Nearly twenty weeks. Right. So how's it going to be when you go into labor? And Flag of Argentina, right there. Souvenirs are a dumb move. You are wrong about Gabriel. He will be a good father. Already, he works hard to provide for us. Also, Unless here's um. Us here, Anna, your little one won't be seeing Papa. Another thing I'll say about Argentina is Argentina has a pretty dark history, like especially around this time. Is Argentina has, has had a series of dictators all the way up until the the eighties. It was like the eighties is when Argentina basically stopped be, being a dictatorship. So it had a series of dictators. And uh, what happened with Argentina is um, the one of the worst things that Argentina did is that after World War II, right around this time, a lot of Nazis actually went to Argentina. And so the Argentinian government actually had a huge part in hiding them. So the Argentina, their, the dictatorships they had at that time, actually admired Germany. They admired German culture. Um, they liked the Nazis. And so they did not extradite a lot of the Nazis. Um, there, are, um, there are a lot of Nazis that were actually caught in a lot of South American countries, not just Argentina. But what happened was typically other countries would get them there. They wouldn't go for, with Argentine, the Argentinian government's permission, and they would go after them. Like Mossad, the um, Israeli... Um, Secret Service, they actually hunted down a lot of escaped Nazis in South America after World War II. But yes, there was a lot of a lot of Nazis that actually went to Argentina. And so to this day, there's actually like um, entire like towns in Argentina, or I should say in villages where people are descendants of Nazis. Um, so it's like not everybody that has like a German name in Argentina is a descendant of Nazis. There was a lot of German immigration also in South America that didn't have anything to do with, with Nazis, but there was a lot of Nazis that actually um, came to Argentina. So the thing about this is if somebody um, has an ancestor that actually showed up in Argentina and they were from Germany, and they were they showed up at Argentina like right at the end of World War II. There's a chance that they could actually be a Nazi. For a very long time. Not sure this means much. Okay. He's hiding here. Okay, let's see. If we can find him. And honestly, what an idiot that he would take the Arge the Argentinian flag with him. Difficult to tell whether it's the suspect vehicle from the scene. Huh. Certainly Gabriel's pride and joy. Check under the beds. Doesn't appear to be connected. Nothing significant. What's this? Doesn't look like anything. On the floor.
Look at that. Serving breakfast He's here. for two, Anna? You should have He's cleared here. up. He's here. Look at this. Somebody's been eating. Not even finished, not even cleaned up. He's he, he's definitely here. Guy was staring at me down there. Where is he? Probably not. There's something in this apartment that I'm missing. Sorry. Broke your lamp. Don't worry. It's for police business. What am I missing here? Investigation music is still playing, but there's something that I'm missing here. This is any use to us. Doesn't give me anything to go on. A lot of stuff. Optimistic and this, the thing boy. about this is some people get pissed about all the unnecessary clues that you can pick up. Like, or I shouldn't even call them clues, but just random stuff. Oh, there we go. Packard. Um, Looks like Valdez gets his wheel back. So, but here's the, but I think it's realistic finding, like, a bunch of useless garbage, like, lying around and, like, useless stuff, useless tools and stuff that you find. The reason is because that's what happens in police investigations. When you're looking for clues, you find a lot of useless stuff. And so that's actually meant to 
increase the realism. Okay, I'm still convinced he's somewhere around here. That actually might be him right there. He might just be pretending to be a neighbor. Uh, but he's probably still hiding here somewhere. You're in serious trouble, Miss Rodriguez. But Gabriel is not here. I have done nothing wrong. Motive for auto theft. Why did he steal the car, Anna? The customer insulted him. He has his honor, no? Customer insulted him? What? He has his honor? What? What? Um... customer insulted him so she just admitted he stole the car that's his honor Anna he said do his friend tried to make a woman out of him he no longer respects this man do we he took the car to show this maricon that he is a man last contact of Gabriel Tell us the truth, Anna. Has Gabriel been here? I haven't seen him for at least three nights. Yep, she's lying. You keep lying to me, and I'll send you and your baby to jail. Whoa! Whoa! He lives here, but he hasn't come home. I swear it. She's, um, he's pregnant? Or is that, um, but uh, that was just a breakfast table set for two in Gabriel Delgado's apartment. Enough, Anna. There are signs all over this place that he's been back. He was here last night. I have never seen him so angry. He went out to his shed and put some things in it. I don't know what and I don't want to know. I love him. Diplomatic plates are covered. We found a license plate matching our stolen vehicle in the shed. Add in the assortment of parts, and we can make Gabriel for a dozen other thefts. It's time to get serious, Anna. You must ask these questions of Gabriel. I know nothing of these car parts. Nothing of these car parts. The Argentinian flag, would she know that? That's. Do what the accuses. You're lying, Anna. I think you're a willing accomplice in these robberies. What proof do you have that I stole the cars? Sorry. None, really. My mistake. Bad cop. I'm gonna go with that. Then tell us where he is! If your baby is born in prison, Anna, the corrections officers will take it from you. You will see your son or daughter through a metal grate for half an hour a week. The start line is on First and Santa Fe. There is a spillway under the bridge that leads to the river. Many policia have wrecked trying to follow him. We will put in a good word for you, Anna. As far as we're concerned, this sits with Gabriel. Start line. That sounds like a street race to me. It's gotten out of hand this last year. No wonder Delgado has such an eye for fine automobiles. Okay, let's go and talk you know the to the um, Let's go stop Valdez. these clowns and get them off the streets.
Okay. Police stations actually right up the block too. Oh yeah, yeah, we're not gonna go down there. That would not be good. Okay, let's go and talk to Valdez now. Valdez has a lot of explaining to Francisco do. Francisco Valdez in for questioning. Sure do, Phelps. Your bird's an interview, too. And get this, he's wearing gloves and doing his best not to touch anything. Can you beat that? <laughs> Sounds like we don't want to keep this guy waiting. It's this way. He might be scared the police are going to try to get his fingerprints. That's what he's, um... Oh, uh... Five. I okay, want to stop this him is with Valdez. About time. Are you the senior officer I requested? I'm Detective Phelps, and this is Detective Bukowski. Have you any idea how long I've been waiting to speak with you? I am needed back at the consulate, and you keep me here like a common criminal. All right, friend. Let's take a deep breath and start all over again. Mr. Valdez. Counsel General. I insist on my full title. Oh, man. Oh, Juan, Juan Francisco Valdez. He is 52 years old, and he is seeing 16-year-old boys. This guy is a 52-year-old man who is seeing a 16-year-old kid, and we don't even know the ages of the other people in the book, but judging our, they're probably teenagers as well. That's just disturbing. And the, the really creepy thing, this is one thing that people don't know, in a lot of states in my country, in the United States, there actually are still a lot of states where the age of consent is 16 um, to this day, and I think that that's wrong. I think the age of consent should be 18 minimum. That's just my opinion. I think that 16 is just too young for the age of consent. I think it's disturbing. I think it's creepy. And you can probably make the argument that it's also pedophilia. It's just disturbing, you, senor, and it's wrong. Remind and me of my it's... cousin Jose who was kicked in the head by a polo pony. We shot the pony. But we probably should have shot poor Jose instead. Attention! What? Okay. Uh, and what I will say is that regardless of whether it's a 52-year-old guy who's seeing a 16-year-old girl or a 52-year-old guy um, who's seeing a 16-year-old um, boy, the sexual orientation does not matter to me. I just think the age of consent should be 18 years old. I think that 16 is too young. So I think this guy is 100% a creep. And the thing about this is that this is a, um, this guy's also a diplomat, and he's a consul general, and I will say this, is that when you have a diplomat involved in a crime, that this just becomes so much more messy, and the police may actually get pressure, um, uh, international pressure, um, to let the person go, um, not detain the person, even if they're involved in a serious crime. So there, that's dip, and here's the thing about this is diplomats have immunity to certain crimes, um, I think, like, but usually the the crimes that diplomats have immunity to, I can't remember the last time that a diplomat was involved in an extremely serious crime, but I actually do know one case that actually happened fairly recent. Uh, but basically, diplomatic immunity is, um, for example, if maybe if they're involved in speeding, um, uh, maybe if they're involved in, you know, something, something else, something else stupid that they would do. Um, I can't really think of anything else. But diplomatic immunity does not protect you from really serious crimes. And the there was actually a case that actually happened recently. Um, it's happened a couple months back, uh, like half a year ago. And this actually happened in Florida. And this was actually involving a consulate also. Uh, and basically, the person that was involved in the crime wasn't even the consul, but they were actually the consul's son. So I think, I think it was the consul's son or it was somebody important at the consulate. But basically, what happened was... Uh, this guy was riding his motorcycle and the guy who was riding his motorcycle there was a cop in front of him and the cop I think was riding another guy a ticket or, or something like that and the guy did not want to wait and so what he decided to do 
He decided to speed past the cop. He hit the cop with his motorcycle. He ran the cop over um, uh, and hit the cop's leg with his, with his tire on his motorcycle. And the cop ended up surviving. The cop actually um, ar ended up arresting the guy. And the when the cop actually ended up arresting the guy, do you know what the guy was saying? The guy was actually saying, oh, you know, my father, he works in the Israeli consulate. And so, you know, diplomatic immunity applies to me. And his lawyer was trying to go for diplomatic immunity. Now, I'm not going to speak on the whole Israel-Palestine conflict. I'm just going to stay away from that. Uh, I'm on the side of peace. That's just what I'm going to say about is I'm not on any side. I just want the violence and the killing to end. But re regarding this situation is this was a uh, the son of an Israeli diplomat who did this. And he ran over a uh, cop. And then he was claiming, oh, you know, diplomatic immunity, it doesn't apply to me, and, uh, and uh, you know, throw out the charges. But the judges in Florida actually said, no, diplomatic immunity does not apply to you and are charging him. And I'm actually happy that they're charging him because being related to a diplomat does not mean that you get run over a police officer. So I'm really ha happy that he's being held, um, uh, held liable for what he did. But that's, um, that's a, I don't know the status in that case because it happened like half a year ago, but just look it up. You'll see like Israeli um, a consulate's son runs over like, you know, cop. It happened like half a year ago. It's in Florida, I'm pretty sure. Okay, Packard purchase history. Let's see. Where did you purchase the car? My secretary and driver arranged the purchase. A disreputable place, Dewey Brothers by name. As soon as I can have it arranged, I will have my Hispano Suiza brought up from Buenos Aires. Hmm. Where did you purchase the car? My secretary and driver arranged to purchase a disreputable place, Dewey Brothers by name. Um, as, as soon as I can have it arranged, I will have my Hispano um, Susan brought up from Buenos Aires. That's in Argentina. Um, he is, um, uh, here's one thing I'll tell you about, about he's lying right away. Because remember what Dewey said? Dewey said he met him in a bar. And so he's, um, he's lying already. We already know that. Um, do I have proof of what Dewey's statements is? Um. Mm. The, the notebook, I would say, too. You're lying about this. You made the arrangements for the car. Call the embassy. I decided the color and model, but was not involved in the transaction. The notebook? Ya yeah, basta! I will stand no more of this. I, I can't believe I got that wrong, because literally um, it, was, it was proof that he was connected to Dewey right there, the notebook. I don't know how I got that wrong. Uh, theft of consular vehicle. Okay, let's see here. Consul General, we have located your car. Can you tell us how it was stolen? It must have been stolen from the consular garage. Terribly inconvenient, of course. I want the perpetrator soundly flogged. Unfortunately, we don't do that here, Your Worship. Yeah, so you can't apply another country's laws to um, uh, to the country that you're a con uh, diplomat in. Doesn't work that way. Um, Damn, this this is a little harder to um I'm gonna use intuition. I'm gonna ask the community. Bad cop, okay. You have a pretty good idea who stole the car, don't you, Consul General? Are you gonna tell me, or do I shake it out of you? There's no call for violence. I suspect a disgruntled boy from the car dealership. You have a name for this kid? Gabriel. Like the Archangel. I have no surname. Association with Gabriel. So tell us about this kid, Gabriel. You had a run-in with him? Mechanico. A presumptuous young man who did not know his place. He presumed to ask me questions. We do a lot of presuming here in the United States, Consul General. It comes with the turf. Mechanico, a presumptuous young man who did not know his place. 
he uh, presumed to ask me questions. I wonder, now I'm, I'm curious whether Juan Francisco Valdez was having an affair with him. That's what I'm curious about now, too. See what the accus is. You fuck young boys, Valdez. Are you a madman? This will cause an international incident. That that has to be the accusation that you guys told me about. That, uh, that's, oh, okay, yeah, that's, um, Valdez's notebook. Listing phone numbers, phone number for William Dewey, uh. Danny, Ben, Miguel, Tristan, and Teddy. Full lips. Ring any bells? I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. Gabriel, spill it. A beautiful but impertinent boy. I mentioned rendezvous and the young man went quite insane. I thought he was going to kill me. I was prepared to pay. We'll be in touch, Consul General. Hey, can you give me a hand? I got a heart. What kind of man leaves his pregnant girlfriend at home while he goes off to play cars? Pregnant girlfriends aren't always a barrel of laughs. Everyone needs to let off a little steam. Some guys wouldn't come back home at all. Are you talking from experience? Quick as we shut one of these races down, another one springs up somewhere else. Kids used to steal cars to sell them. Now they just want to wrap them around a lamppost. The next 16-year-old I have to peel off the sidewalk, you're calling the mother. I've had enough of those to last me a lifetime. Illegal There's street race. How are we going to catch this guy? Right Quick! They're getting away! Phelps, 1247. Requesting assistance at first at Santa Fe. Reports of an illegal street race. Stay on Delgado. Get away. What the? Gonna lose him. I can't catch up to him. Delgado was our boy. Forget the others. Whoa, okay. Step on him, fellas. Take him out. Lay into his wheel, Archie. Come on. They try to spin him out. This is actually Enough a tactic that a lot of cops do. Guy out. I gotta get on his side a tiny bit when I get on his side, and I can spin him out. Come on, you're getting free by a kid in a red fort. God damn it, Cole, hold it steady. What do you? No. Gabriel Delgado, you're under arrest for Grand Theft Auto. Fuck you, puto. You should speak to the maricón. Valdez, I showed him. Now who's a man? I should have burned his fucking car. For people that are making references to GTA, that's actually what the charge is. If you're stealing a car, it's called Grand Theft Auto. You got a foreign dignitary outed as a fruit and a kitty raper, a car dealer we're gonna let slide for the kickbacks, and a street punk car thief who sure as hell won't be taking liberties with other people's autos again anytime soon. That Detective Phelps is not a bad haul. You keep your chin low and your hands high and you keep bringing me clearances just like that one. That's textbook policing and we need more of it in this department. And so giving my final thoughts on this case, um, what I will say about this is 
Valdez did not just ask Gabriel out, but he was actually sexually harassing him. How do I know that he was sexually harassing him? Because he said that he was a young man who did not know his place. What is that supposed to mean exactly, did not know his place? So it's strongly implied that Valdez was sexually harassing Gabriel. Gabriel got pissed off. Um, he's a mechanic. He has experience of cars. Uh, he decided to teach hit, um, Valdez a lesson, stole the car, and uh, decided to trash it. That's, he was probably going to sell off the, um, the tires. That's probably what he was going to do. Um, he probably had nowhere to store the car, which is probably why he didn't end up taking the entire car. But honestly, I don't feel bad for Valdez getting his, um, uh, getting his car, you know, completely trashed. I think he kind of deserved it. Now, as for Valdez, I think he should be in prison, and I think that he's a pedophile. I don't care what his sexual orientation is. If Valdez was, um, uh, having a sexual relationship with a 16-year-old girl, I would just be just as pissed off ab about that. I have no problem with gay marriage, but I know there's people out there that they will try to cancel you for anything that you say. It doesn't matter to me if, um, if there are states in America where the age of consent is 16. I think that that's wrong. And I don't think that it should be 16. I think that it should be um, 18 minimum. I think that anybody, any adult that has sexual relationships with a 16-year-old kid, I think that that is pedophilia. That is just my personal opinion. And I think that Valdez should be in prison. I think he definitely should. And I will say also about this, uh, this Valdez might actually be arrested. He might actually be sent to prison. He's probably not going to be because of the diplomatic immunity. But what he actually could be arrested for is he could be arrested possibly for sodomy. Because a lot of people don't know this, that... In this time period, it was actually illegal to be gay. So it was, um, gay marriage was legalized, I think it was like about a decade ago by the Supreme Court where it's legal in all 50 states. But basically, back then, gay marriage wasn't just illegal, but it was actually illegal to be gay. So if you were in a gay relationship, you would be arrested and the charge was sodomy. That was pretty much every single state. I don't think there was any place in America where it was legal to be gay. There was a lot of states where um, if people were gay, that it wasn't as um, uh, enforced as like other states, like the southern states were the worst with this. The southern states were extremely homophobic and they would go after people. But like a state like California, um, if people were just more private about it, the police probably would not go after people for it. Uh, but um, what I will say is that the game uh, being gay, homosexuality wasn't legalized until like the 70s or the early 80s uh, in most of America. And then, you know, the Supreme Court decision that happened like over a decade ago where, uh, where gay marriage was legalized in all 50 states. But that's what he actually could be arrested for. He could be arrested for sodomy. Uh, but, you know, Valdez, like I said, he's a scumbag. He's a pedophile. I don't care what his sexual orientation is. It doesn't matter to me. I just don't think that a, uh, an adult should be in a, in a relationship with a 16-year-old. I think it's disturbing, and I just think it's creepy. But thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this part. If you did, do drop a like. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.